Let's go. Okay, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to another Risk Institute online session where we break down concepts and ideas based around uh, risk and uncertainty. Um, today, we're especially fortunate to have with us Dr. Olivier Manuku Pamen, who will talk to us about his research in piecewise binomial lattices, uh, lattices for interest rates under the skew of CEV Vasekek uh, models. Um, the presentation will be around 45 minutes and 20 minutes for Q&A. So please, could you make sure that your mics are muted? And uh, at firstly, I'd just like to make a few announcements. So next week coming up um, on the 1st of December, we have Professor Foon Kuang uh, talking to us about mapping site investigation data in data-centric geotechnics. Uh, the following week, we'll have Dr. Pia Johanna Schweizer talking to us about analysis and categorization of hazards with high crisis potential. And then Dominic Hose, uh, who will be talking to us about risk uh, methods and prob probability theory. Um, on the 1st of February, as well, for People's Diaries, we'll have our Risk Institute annual showcase where our researchers and PhD students and alumni will talk to us about their, their recent work. Um, so keep that penciled into your diaries. So introducing our speaker, um, Dr. Olivier Manuku Pamen is a reader and associate professor in mathematics at the University of Liverpool. Uh, he's held the position of German research chair in mathematics and its applications at the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences in Ghana. Prior to this, he's completed his MSc in mathematics at the University of Yaoundé, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and received a PhD in financial mathematics from the University of uh, the Witzwater Watersand. He then joined the Center of Mathematics for Applications in the University of Oslo as a postdoc uh, research fellow. Um, and from there, he took a permanent position here at the Institute, uh, for, uh, sorry, not in the Institute for Risk, but Institute for Financial Acti Actuarial Mathematics at the University of Liverpool. His research lie in stochastic analysis and its applications. In the past year, he's focused on stochastic optimal control theory and their applications to finance, insurance, and microfinance, backward stochastic differential equations and their applications, uh, as well as Malevian calculus and dynamical systems. So I'm really pleased to have us in, uh, to have Dr. Livia Manuku uh, with us here today. And uh, without further ado, would you like to share your slides? Okay, yeah, thank you. Sorry, can you uh, keep your microphones yes. muted? Um, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Francis, for the nice introduction. Uh, and good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me, yeah. Um, yeah, we Olivier, can hear, we can uh, hear. Pamen, as Francis said, um, I mean, I'm here at the University of Liverpool. Today I'll be talking on uh, piecewise, um, uh, yeah, lattice, uh, piecewise binomial lattice for interest rates uh, under the skew and uh, Vasicek models. So um, this is a work that started a few years ago, uh, joined with. Uh, Guangli uh, Xu and um, Xiaoyang Zhu when they visited, when Xiaoyang visited the University of Liverpool. Um, so I would first also like to acknowledge uh, financial support of uh, Alexander von Humboldt Foundation uh, for this uh, work. As I said, uh, it's a joint work uh, with uh, Guangli Xu and uh, Xiaoyang Zhu. Uh, they are both in China. Chao, Chao Yong is in uh, BIT in uh, Beijing. So the work, uh, as I say, started a few years ago, and um, we're looking at um, how uh, can we uh, check the effect of a regulator, right, and a controller on the dynamic of the interest rate. So, uh, for for example, um, uh, during the, the the financial crisis, the, the regulator would make sure that the interest rate was staying maybe below or uh, close to zero. So this uh, also happened in Japan in the 90s when we had uh, the financial uh, crisis, when uh, the bubble 
uh, the asset uh, bubble price collapse. So um, this is, uh, and then we decided to model uh, uh, the interest rate in this situation using the skew model. And after modeling it using the skew model, uh, we try to uh, find a numerical method that will uh, uh, enable us to compute, for example, bond prices and or option bond prices for American or European option. Okay, so uh, this is the outline of my talk. I will uh, briefly introduce it, uh, the, the skew model. Yeah, a question. I, uh... Sorry, no, I'm just uh, letting people know they can ask their questions in the chat. Okay, okay, no problem. And, and then I will uh, we present the, the lattice model, the, the, the tree model. Uh, it will be mainly the binomial tree here. And uh, of course, uh, as I said, the, the skew CEV model and the skew Vasishek model with discontinuous drift. Then the, the, the tree lattice for skew CEV model. And because we are looking at uh, this uh, tree model, we would like to compare it with a method that is existing. So we will uh, compare with the finite difference uh, uh, um, method. And then we present uh, some, uh, I present some simulation results. First for the classical CIR and this QCIR. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to uh, discuss uh, the discontinuous drift uh, in this talk. I just tell you, uh, uh, give you a result on existence and, and uniqueness on, on, this, on this model. Okay, um, yeah. So uh, skew diffusion uh, in modeling uh, asset price in, in, and interest rate has been widely used in the recent year, as I said earlier, during the uh, special path features. So uh, as for the interest rate, the um, frequently exhibit regulated and uh, controlled characteristic. For example, the interest rate uh, policy, the zero interest rate policy was used in Japan after the Japanese asset price bubble collapse. And then we had uh, just uh, recently uh, the prevailing zero negative interest rate environment in developed countries, I mean, mainly in Europe. And as well as uh, we have the leading role of the people banks of China in the process of interest rate liberalization. So uh, I would not say that uh, keeping uh, having a zero interest rate policy is always nice because as we saw in Japan and even you didn't always uh, bring the economy uh, back to speed uh, uh, in, on the long run, contrary to the um, uh, uh, US, for example. So um, if we want to take into account this control uh, in our interest rate model, um, the traditional interest rate model are challenge, and then they will not be uh, really uh, effective. So we introduce a skew model to capture the regulated interest rate dynamic. So uh, what we will do is that we will uh, have a level in which um, the interest rate will move upward or downward with a predetermined uh, probability when it hits that level. So uh, before uh, continuing, I'd like to uh, say a bit about the skew uh, model and what is a skew, skew process. I'll start with a skew Brownian motion. So uh, the skew Brownian motion uh, was uh, uh, introduced uh, by uh, Ito and Makin. I think it was in 1965. And uh, it was a bit strange because it was so uh, uh, looking at the Brownian motion, uh, reflecting at zero infinity, and then look at Z, the excursion of the Brownian motion. So they were wondering, okay, if uh, our when uh, what happened when Z uh, uh, hit a certain level, right? It should go upward with a certain probability, or downward uh, with a set one minus that probability. Right, so you have excursion away from the origin, and then you change the sign of each of your excursion independently with probability one minus P that the excursion is positive, for example, or P that the probability P that the excursion is positive or one minus P that uh, it would be negative. So basically this is uh, what uh, is said here. And then, um, it was very interesting and they uh, actually 
uh, conjecture that it uh, would satisfy an equation, but they didn't show it. So later on, uh, I think Arison and Ship show that uh, the skew uh, uh, Brownian motion satisfy uh, this uh, stochastic differential equation, where uh, XP here is the local time at zero of the process X. So uh, what is the local time? Because maybe this time we are not familiar. I believe that uh, Risk Institute, we know what is a Brownian motion. And then what about the local time here? Of course, if I was going to the uh, maybe a school of, I mean, uh, <laughs> geography, they will tell me that, okay, uh, they will tell me, uh, just think of the time zone, but here is not the time zone, the local time, if I say the local time, how do we define it? I will consider this level set. And it was shown that the measure, the Lebesgue measure of the level set here is zero, P almost surely. And uh, Paul Levy, introduce these two parameter, a random field, and show that this limit exists and is not identically zero. And he called this uh, the measure du voisinage and this is time spent of the, by the Brownian motion around this, and he called it the, the, the local time. So this is uh, one of the definitions of the local time among many. There's another definition of uh, the local time this definition is given by the uh, Tanaka uh, Mayer uh, formula. So if you take X, a continuous semi-Martingale, and then you take the absolute value of X, this is a Lipschitz function, and you can write uh, uh, this formula, the decomposition of XT minus A. And you see that uh, we have the local time again of XT. But um, if I think of the local time, when I, 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 I say local time, um, I could also um, write the, the, the occupation. Uh, I could also write the local time, for example, like the local time at uh, level A, of maybe of the Brownian motion. Let me only discuss the Brownian motion at A, just to keep uh, the location. Uh, if I take, this is one over two epsilon integral from zero to t of um, one, uh, I think, uh, a minus epsilon, a plus epsilon. And then we have here b of s ds. This is the local time. And then I can uh, define the occupation measure, of course, of the Brownian motion around uh, measure space, measurable space by. Uh, Oh, yeah, so, sorry. Sorry, I think I, yeah. you muted your microphone. We have you now. Yeah, Isan, thank you. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're right. It's A. And here, um, I have uh, this is uh, what you also have. Right. So, and what do we say here? We we can uh, easily say. Sorry, is not here. So we will say here that uh, the local time, if one can write it like this, is uh, also the ragon Nicodim uh, density of the occupation measure here, respect to the Lebesgue measure. And then this occupation measure can also be written uh, has, uh, if I take, for example, uh, one of B of the Brownian motion, DS. So this is also uh, what we have. Uh, here's the Brownian motion. So this is the link, for example, between the local time, the occupation time. And one thing about the local time is this is a measure which is singular to the Lebesgue measure. So this is uh, what we will be using um, uh, here. So this part will play a very important role uh, uh, now. So the, the, the local time. So what is the uh, QCEV? 
So uh, I will uh, consider probability uh, measure omega FQ, and then I assume that I'm already in the risk neutral measure, right? So we there's no uh, longer there's no more change of measure, and then uh, here I will be using the symmetric local time, right? And the symmetric local time, and um, we assume that our CEV model satisfy uh, equation the stochastic differential equation two. So we are familiar with this equation when uh, uh, this part is not there, right? We know that uh, this will be the classical CEV model. So what this model says is that uh, when you approach A, right, uh, uh, with probability P, yeah, you're upwards and probability one minus P will be downward. So um, here W is a Brownian motion. And then K is the speed, theta is the, the, the long-term mean, sigma is the volatility, and uh, gamma is the uh, volatility elasticity parameter. And as I said already, um, <clears throat> L hat is a symmetric local time. And P here is the probability of going upward when RT hits the level A. So that one minus P would be the probability of going downward. And um, one thing we want to know is whether this equation has a, a unique solution. And then we say, yes, the equation has a unique solution when gamma is uh, equal to zero or gamma is bigger than one half, a unique strong solution. And I think that when gamma is between zero and one half, uh, uniqueness uh, doesn't hold. So this, uh, uh, we show that, and then uh, we use uh, uh, approach by, by um, Engelbert and Smith in the 80s to show that this equation has a, a unique solution. So uh, very, very important, as I said, for us to make sure that our model uh, makes sense. And uh, if we have the local time, uh, we, we are interested in designing um, uh, uh, lattice method. And therefore, with the local time, we will not be able to go directly and design our lattice method or design our uh, tree method. So what we do is to first uh, have uh, uh, apply some transformation to get rid of the local time. But before getting rid of the local time, we will get rid, uh, we make sure that you work with uh, constant volatility or just a volatility that is identity or one, basically. So to do that, we define uh, this function f, and then we define the first transform x by f of this. So if you check here uh, with the choice of our gamma, um, we have that this function here, our gamma will be, if you see here, I took gamma between zero and one. I'm only going to present the case gamma, sorry, between 0 0.5 and one, and gamma equals zero. In the case gamma equal one, um, uh, I think I presented, yeah, I, I also presented it, but uh, for the numerical um, simulation, I'll only um, stop here for the case uh, uh, um, gamma between 0 0.5 and one and gamma equals zero. So if I define this function f, right, and xt, then you see that here the function is nice, so I could, I could do something. So uh, here I can apply Ito's formula and we just have this equation satisfied by uh, the first transform. Notice that this uh, uh, volatility is one and then we see half the local time. So this A tilde is simply A to the power one minus gamma, sigma uh, one minus gamma. And then, uh, the second transform is this one, where we define again um, G like this, and then YT equal G of XT. Then uh, this G uh, can be seen that, you can see that's the difference of two convex function. We can then apply Ito's formula to derive the uh, differential equation uh, satisfied by Y. So this is the differential equation satisfied by y. So uh, y here has a differential equation with a piecewise uh, coefficient. 
Now we have, uh, at the beginning, we had an equation with the local time term, applying two transformation, we end up having a, a diffusion equation with piecewise coefficient. And uh, our RT and YT are linked by this uh, relation. That is, if we want to apply the, for example, the numerical scheme on the YT, on RT, sorry, we can just apply on YT and then uh, use this transform. So um, now, what about when uh, gamma is equal to one? When gamma is equal to one, uh, again, we do the same. When gamma is equal to one, the model is reduced to this equation 11. And then again, some transform, we have X first, and then uh, which is given by this. And, def and after that, we uh, have our Y, our G, which is, here and this is how the equation looks like. So for gamma between 0 0.5 and 1, not included, and gamma uh, and, and gamma equal 0, we have a transform. And when gamma equal 1, we also have another transform. So uh, we have these two transform. Again, we keep in mind that uh, y t and r t are linked by uh, by this. I don't know any question or okay. No questions as of yet. No question. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And. <clears throat> so what about the Vasishek model? Uh, no, this isn't kind of einstein ullenbeck model. And uh, this is what we have now. The short rates on the Q is given uh, by the following SDE. This is our SDE. But if you check carefully, we will see that this model is such that this part is bounded, right? And this part slips in linear growth. So um, without this part, again, we know that this equation has um, a unique strong solution. Good news is also this is time independent. And when we add this part, we also need to know whether this equation makes sense. And again, this is just the long-term behavior. We can take like um, uh, this, we have A1 and then we have A2. So I say theta one is a state dependent long-term mean in the low interest rate environment. So basically if the interest rate is less than A1, this is what we say on the long run, our uh, uh, interest rate will go to theta one. And if it's bigger on the long run, it goes to theta two. But here, this is, uh, a2 is where you have the, 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 the regulator intervening. So when it hits, when it's at A2, so we push it up with a certain probability or it will be pushed down with a certain probability. So um, again, uh, K is the, the, the speed and the mean reversion. Sigma is the short rate volatility and has already said what theta one and theta two were. And uh, L again is our uh, local time. In this case, what do we have? Yeah, we have also uh, this existence and and uniqueness results, right? So we we have that um, the Vasishek model with discontinuous drift admit a unique strong solution thanks to also we use in the proof the approach uh, by uh, Engelbert and Schmidt again to construct the, the solution. So, um, for example, imagine that we have uh, an interest rate, right? Uh, another explanation of this uh, skew model, uh, where the dynamic of the short rate, for example, is uh, hovering near zero for an extended period. So uh, we are saying that it's feasible to use the skew model, right? 
by setting the skew model, for example, uh, let's say 0.2%, and the upward probability may be small and maybe 10%, so that um, um, the short rate will stay above, right? The level with probability 10%, above 0.2 probability 10%, and below 0.2 with probability 90%. So um, what does it mean? It means that the interest rate will be hovering around zero for a long, a long, uh, a long period of time. <clears throat> so this is what we can do to, 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 to make sure that it doesn't go too far from, from, from zero. So in this case, um, uh, we have this transform Vasishek model, uh, y equals gx, and then we obtain this uh, uh, result, just giving us the SDE satisfied by y. So we have uh, SDE satisfied by our skew model. We transform the model to make sure that we now obtain SDE with a uh, piecewise constant coefficient. And now uh, we want to uh, compute, for example, the option and then uh, uh, bond, the bond price and the bond option price for European American uh, option. So before doing so, we want to uh, discuss the, the lattice, right? So yeah. How do we construct our, our lattice? How do uh, we construct the lattice? Uh, we first uh, uh, set uh, or define a proxy that was C. And then this is how the proxy will move. And then our Y0 is the starting value of YT, right? And then Y0 could be given because we know what R0 is and we have the relationship between Y and R. So y0 can be computed in that, in that case. And um, this C is a proxy for our A tilde, right? And we, we get the proxy C, that is uh, the initial one. And of course, by this definition, our C converges to A tilde uh, as a time step delta T approach to zero. We will divide our Y T into two regions, right? The, the first region above uh, the, the, the piecewise level and then the region uh, below. So the first region will be above, the second region will be below. And then how do we truncate now the Y? Because we're look, looking at a binomial uh, uh, um, uh, lattice approach. The first step, we determine the path of the tree when y is larger than the truncation, y mean, but not equal to. So because we have a, a y mean, which is the minimal that we assume, and then we see that when we are at the minimal, we will just move horizontally or upwards. So it's not the first step, we assume that we are not at the minimal, right? And then we are not equal to c. Now, what happens when the y is equal to c? And later on, what happens when the y is the minimum? So this is uh, what, uh, what we have. So the first step, right? So y is strictly bigger than the minimum and y is different from c. So this is what we do. The y u up and down, this is what we choose, where the j is given, sorry is given, uh, sorry, but by, by, by this uh, equation 26. And G0 is the smallest uh, um, integer greater than this value. So we can compute the probability because you, you want to go up, right? Or down in the next step. So we also want to find the probability of going up and down. So this is uh, compute in a very uh, easy way. You just have to assume that the drift of the process Y, right? So the, the jump 
uh, is the corresponding drift of the process yt. And when you set that equation, you obtain this one. I think it's uh, not too difficult to get this. So in the second step, uh, see, okay, this is what we have in the first step, for example. This is the figure that we have. So what does it mean here? As I said earlier, so uh, the jump size is, uh, keep in mind, square root of sig uh, is sigma square root of delta t, right? So yt is located, in, if yt is less than c, this is what we have. If yt is less than c, the jump size is p square root of delta t. And if yt is bigger than c, this is the jump size, y, is y minus p. Of course, if you have p less than 0 0.5, then y minus p will be bigger than, than, than 0 0.5. That's why we have a, big, a kind of big jump here and smaller jumps here. Now, if what happened um, when yt equals c? What happened when uh, yt is equal to c? So when yt is equal to c, we have uh, 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 this uh, movement uh, on, 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 on the, on the, of the tree. Right, so um, and we can again compute the probability and uh, get this. I mean, it's uh, again uh, just a straightforward computation for for the probability. So basically, what does twenty eight means? It simply means that once the tree uh, touches C, the jump size maybe should artificially adjust. Right, will be artificially adjusted in the next two, in the next step, so as to recombine. So you have to adjust the jump size. And this is what is happening in 28. And in this case, uh, that's what we have at C, right? Just in here. And uh, what happened when a white mean equal, this white equal Y mean, so when yt equal y mean, we have two, uh, two cases, right? When yt equal y mean. And then here we will be, we use um, uh, the, the, the approach of uh, Nawalka and Co and Nawalka and Balieva to, to come up to, 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 to have this tree approach, to have this uh, step, for, for example. So in this case, our yu is given by this one. So he will move horizontal, the YD will be moving horizontally. He will no longer go down, right? Because it's here. And then we have the Y mean, the, the minimum we have on. And then the other will be pushed up. And G, uh, J here is given by 31, the smallest uh, integer greater than this one. And in this case, the probability, right? For upward or downward move, uh, given by equation 32. And this is how it looks like. Right? If you see here, we are only moving in this horizontal direction or upward. And later on, when we are here, we can move upward or downward. So this is exactly what the, the tree will do. Now, assume that um, our yt is strictly bigger than one minus p a tilde and r mean is strictly bigger than zero. So yd is yt, right? Again, uh, we use uh, Nawalka and I think there's a h missing here and Balieva and Nawalka. And it, this is what we obtain. 33 and 34. So basically, um, we are, um, here I'm just giving what happened at each node uh, depending on what yt is, at y at time t is, what happened at the next node. And uh, this is what we obtain. This is your y mean again, still bigger here. And then we have things. So because when you are the y mean, when yt equal y mean, you go horizontally, or you move upwards. So when you hit y mean, you can't go downward. That's what uh, we do. 
And I think um, here um, I can also say something about the bond price, right? So that's what we said. If uh, we have the bond price, right, it's given by uh, F of RT minus one, then, uh, or F of RT, we know that F of RT minus one given by this discounted uh, expected uh, value. And yeah, so this is uh, what we had. In this case, we have, uh, we can recap this for P bigger than zero or P less than zero. And you can see if I'm at Y main, we are only here, we stay horizontal, we go up or down. And when we hit C, right, we go up with a probability or down with a probability according to uh, the step two. Here, you're according to step one, here step two, here step three. And we also thought we should compare this with uh, another method because it's always important. I don't know, before discussing maybe final difference, I don't know if there's any question so far. Again, there's, there's no. no question. I think someone made a comment about one of the, the early slides um, yeah, yeah, I'm 12 I, um, minutes in, but okay. Yeah, that's fine. Good. So, um, for the finite difference, uh, you know that using uh, the risk neutral pricing valuation theory, we can show that F will satisfy this uh, uh, partial differential equation with this condition. And then, um, uh, if we take the average, uh, in the forward and the backwards uh, uh, differential, we obtain sorry we obtain that our f satisfy this equation where the coefficient a i b j and c j satisfy uh, this equation. So this is the the scheme that we'll be using. And then if you see this one, this is what is causing uh, some some problems, right? So that's the special feature of, of that local time part. So uh, let's see, uh, discuss the, the numerical results thing. I still have like four or five minutes. Uh, mm, yeah, okay. This is what happened, uh, the, the first table. I, uh, he, I'm here presenting only what happened when the, the, the when we're using the classical uh, CIR bond price, right? So basically it means that your P equal 0 0.5 and then uh, gamma is also equal uh, 0 0.5. Then you have the, the, the classical uh, CIR model. So in this table, uh, this is what we should, uh, we want to, to, to check, right? So look at the, the price here, we will see that the price are accurate, all of them. So, the, but uh, the, the accuracy decrease when the short rate volatility uh, and the time to maturity increases. Because here, the good news is we have a closed form uh, solution. Now let's check here the volatility, right? The short rate volatility, and then let's check the time to maturity here. So here we have the short rate volatility, and then we have the time uh, to maturity. See if I take 0 0.5 to one, so the F finite difference gives me this, here, 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 here and here. So uh, which is somehow different from this one, less accurate. So four, two, three, uh, seven. But if I uh, go here, for example, we see that the results are exactly uh, are the same, right? So we have this and this, the, the results are exactly the same. So if I take the finite difference again here, the result, uh, the finite difference will be better. 
right? So um, the valuation of the finite difference is slightly better than those of the tree approach. And when this increases, and this increases, then we have um, um, that we should, I mean, the, 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 we, as I said earlier, we see that we do not have uh, a good accuracy. But overall, the finite difference perform better. But if we take the three approaches among the three lattices, uh, we will see that uh, the NB will perform, uh, outperform the NR. And then the NB also behave a bit better than in our case. Right. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's what I can report here. What about the bond price, the, the option price? This is basically, this was a bond option price, right? And uh, what happened here again is um, Yeah, the, sorry about that. The um, European price, if we, we check the, the European price uh, obtained uh, from the CR uh, closed form, uh, the binomial tree and the, uh, and, uh, I mean, the FD and B binomial and trinomial, see that they converge rapidly to, to this one. So that's what uh, we observe from our from, from our from our from our simulation. So what about the skew model? This was just uh, to present what happened in the classical model. What about the skew model? Well, for the skew model, I would like to uh, mention here that uh, we have the local time. So basically, it means that your p is no longer zero point five. Our p here could be zero, anything but not 0 0.5. So what happened? So are we going to see an impact of the skew level and, and then the probability? Are we going to see this impact? So let us check uh, what happened with, uh, to, to, to compare it, we choose a benchmark approach, which will be the spectral approach. Right, we choose the, the benchmark for us was the, was the spectral approach. And then um, what about, the, let's, let's check what happened. The parameter P, as I said earlier, was uh, given for the upward probability. And then after hitting level A. So what does it mean? It means that a, a smaller value of P indicate that the short rate we stay longer, right, below A, a smaller value of P. We likely stay longer below A, likely stay longer below A, right? So um, now, for example, if P for equals 0 0.2, the skew level, so what does it mean? P equals 0 0.2, so it means that it's likely to stay under the level A, right? So P equals 0 0.2, this is it. We, we check P equals 0 0.2 here and here. We have uh, this price, P equals 0 0.2. We have this price, P equals 0 0.2. Maybe I put that in blue. blue. Uh, we have the finite difference and the binomial tree. And then we have the finite difference and the binomial tree. We have the finite difference, binomial tree. Right. So if we have P equals 0 0.2, right, then what happened to the price? When P equals 0 0.2, we have 0, 95, 95, 94, 95, 94, 94. But here when P equals 0 0.8, Sorry, this was zero point. We have ninety four here. What does it mean? It suggests that when your peak was zero point two, it forces your interest rate to stay below 
and therefore the bond price will increase. But if you take your P small, your interest rate is forced to be below and the bond price normally increase, right? So if you take here, you compare with this one, these two. My P is small. If my P is small, the bond price increases, right? So this is uh, actually uh, natural, it's, it's normal. So, and then uh, if you wanted to compare now uh, the method uh, between the FD and the, 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 the binomial tree, yeah, if you wanted to compare the two methods, we will see that the uh, binomial tree is closer to the uh, 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 spectral method in most of the cases. Right. So, and therefore we can say that the binomial tree performs slightly better in this case. Uh, okay, this is the second part of the of the table. <clears throat> and the same thing will happen for the skew uh, CI and CIR uh, uh, option prices. But I think I will not, I didn't show the, the computational time, but here the, uh, which is also important to check um, for the spectral method, the computational time is quite long in terms of minutes. And of course the FD method has the best uh, computational times quite rapid. Uh, and the tree method, the tree lattice had an acceptable computational time in seconds. So about six seconds, highest. Yeah, but of course uh, for six seconds for the CIR method, we obtain, I think, 0 0.1 second or from 1.2 for the FD method. So still, it was acceptable, that what we thought. And here, um, I would say that our FD, uh, the FD method that, uh, I mean, the skew, sorry, the piecewise uh, binomial tree method that we propose uh, is a uh, good one perform at least better than uh, FD in uh, many cases that we propose. Of course, uh, with the computational time uh, bigger than the FD method. So in summary, uh, we've presented uh, a binomial uh, lattice on the assumption that uh, the short rate of uh, follows QCEV. And then uh, we transform the CEV uh, with uh, NSDE with um, piecewise continuous coefficient. And then we build a binomial tree method. So later on, we uh, perform some uh, numerical uh, computation and then compare the, the, the result with the final difference using the spectral method as uh, the, the the benchmark. So it will also be interesting to look, for example, at this model uh, when uh, the skew uh, uh, model has, in addition, a stochastic volatility. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know. Uh, and then oh. these are the main two references. Um, the, the one with discontinuous drift. Uh, is in uh, AGTF 2017, whereas uh, the one on QCEV uh, is uh, on the review currently at uh, Quantitative Finance. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Olivier uh, Manuku Paman. That was a really fascinating and really in-depth comprehensive talk of, of your subject. Um, I'd like to open the floor to, to see whether we have any questions from the audience. 
if anyone would like to unmute their microphone. Anybody like to unmute their microphone or raise their hand? Oh, okay. Uh, I think I'm not sure how to say your, your username. But hey, Sam. Hassana, would you like to say your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, thank you very much, Olivia, for the for the nice talk. So uh, I have a question regarding, you know, you know me uh, regarding the first part of your talk. Uh, you define it as uh, SQ process of your interest throughout an SDE, mm -hmm. which the mm -hmm. long part time of the process itself is in the inside the SDE. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, this is the part, you know, I was uh, struggling to understand, you know, how you defined mm -hmm. the local time of a process, which you are de trying to define the process throughout the SDE itself. Mm -hmm. uh, this is exactly uh, what, uh, for example, even if you already go through the definition by, uh, Yeah, um, to this definition, right? For the skew Brownian motion. Uh, uh, the, the, the one for your interest rate for R. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying, for, is it okay yes, for the skew yes, Brownian yes, motion? For SQ, for SQ ones, you know. Yes, for the skew Brownian motion, yes. So here, for, for this also, you, this one also, you, you have an, an XT and then you define the local time here, for example, this one. Yeah, but you- If you, you have, have a semi-martingale. Ah. From the Tanaka Mayer formula, if you take a continuous semi-martingale. Yes. So here also, you, you yes. could have Point something like there. that. Keep it yes. here, the equation number two, you're trying mm -hmm. to define what is your R. Yes. The, the the you define the R throughout the dynamics and the mm -hmm. dynamics involve the local time of the process itself. Yes, yes. But the question is that why does the local time of the process does exist in the first place? You Your I would be a continuous semi martingale yeah. So is is under assumptions the R is the semi martingale yeah, I mean, you, uh, if you take uh, just, um, yeah, I mean, if you, yes, you can, uh, you, you can define, this is not a problem because um, uh, you, you have an, it's like a reflected SDE, right? This is just a reflected SDE. Well, I don't if it drift and if you, if you say that my R, you know, is Sammy Martin yeah, which satisfy in this SDE, then I don't have a problem because I already know that local term is going to exist, okay, mm -hmm. and the SDE. But if you don't know R is in the class of the Sammy Martin games, then how would you guarantee that the local term does exist, which no, you, you... satisfy in equation two? Uh, this is the part, you know, Sorry. yes. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, but but I completely understand. If you if you say that my R is in the class of semi martingale, then I, I, I completely agree that. Uh... Okay. Okay. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Yeah, just uh, just have a question. Uh, Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, where you had the trees, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe if you could go to the page. I didn't really get how um, how you were moving on the tree in respect to when you jump up or down. I didn't really get it. Here, for example. Um, uh, yes, yeah, I understood that uh, yeah, where well, you had the diagrams, the tree itself. Yes, here, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, when you are here, for example, you are at the minimum, you just move mm -hmm. uh, horizontally. And then if you move upwards, you are somewhere in step uh, one. Okay. And in step one, you just apply what you have in step one. For example, okay. yeah. And uh, to come down, I guess you are in, um, it will depend on your um, probability, I guess, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, all right. Thanks. Um, I think I have I have a question, and it might be uh, a little bit silly or, or or naive, but this is the first time that I've seen this technique. I think it looks really intriguing and really useful. Um, what are some of the ways that you think you could use to improve the 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 efficiency compared to the other methods that you sh showed in in the tables? Um, <laughs> because you were talking about introducing stochastic volatility. But I'm wondering what other techniques you might have considered to try and improve the performance. The performance of the uh, yes, um, uh, uh, I, the truth is at the moment. Um, I mean to make it maybe a bit uh, better. Um, I don't know at the moment. The truth is. Just like that, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Yeah. But it's, it's already quite good, so maybe it doesn't need any uh, improvement. But maybe there's an alternative technique that you you'd be interested in um, mm. to compare against. I don't. I don't know whether there's any uh, other blind spots that maybe you haven't included in the presentation. Mm. Come again, please. No, I, didn't no, that. I just said maybe maybe there was a. A blind spot or something that you uh, you didn't include in the presentation that you'd like to explore further. Um, I'm just uh, curious. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Because uh, no, not really. Um, no. Uh, no. I okay. don't think so. Uh, yeah. But uh, just okay. to, to come enough. back to uh, Esan question. Esan. Yeah. Esan. I, yes. Yeah. Yes. If you if you for example look at the. Um, at a stochastic, because this is just a reflected SDE, because when you solve a reflected SDE, right, you, you have your process X, maybe you, you take the SDE without the, 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 the local time part, and then you know that without the local time part, this SDE has a, has a solution, right? Okay, yes. And it will be a continuous semi-martingale. And then now you will add uh, the local time in it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So yeah. The, then, then you can solve that. Uh, uh, that I mean, you can just make sure that this has a solution as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm. that, that makes sense now. Yes. Yeah, that was yeah. a, yeah, I was a struggle, you know, to uh, probably I, I, I didn't get it. Now you, you're in the right, a good page. Is there any time that I, uh, I can ask a quick question? Okay, go ahead. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I think there's time for uh, one or two more. Yeah, this is a stupid question, Olivier. Hope it makes sense. You know, uh, is there any hope that your your tree is going to uh, n not tree itself, but uh, the price based on the tree going to converge to the, the price of the options on the on the model? Yes, uh, we had in some cases when I, I mean, of course, um, you know, you you have explicit closed form. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and then we compare with the closed form. Uh, of course, uh, as I was saying, when you use the closed form, the FD perform a bit better. <laughs> perform better, I must, I must confess that. Uh, so you, you prove because when, price, when you have a certain price of the options converge to the price of the options on the yeah. classical models you have. Yeah, that's exactly uh, what you have here. Um, for example, for the classical model, right? So this is the you have a closed form. Yes, yes. And then that's what I was saying. You 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 had something which was okay. The tree here was converging. But I was saying that uh, when we move, 
right? When the time and the sigma becomes bigger, we were, we we're close, but not close enough, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, so, is there any reason uh, that the finite difference uh, does sometimes better depending on the volatility and the time to maturity? Um, that's reason I think that, or? It, um, I think it's uh, the, the uh, in uh, of course uh, it's it's a numeric if you have an exact solution right uh, <laughs> if you have an exact form there you find that different form uh, I guess the the volatility was what was causing is what is causing problem when it's too big so mm -hmm. the reason I think as I said the reason would be the the I guess the volatility. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. that was that. Because if it's bigger, then maybe add more noise. And yeah. thanks. And the, the truth is, the truth is, we only uh, started to study the finite difference uh, really recently, because we were asked to compare the method, for example, that we're proposing with the finite difference. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so no, yeah, we... of course, it's very natural. Yes. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. We have a, a few people th thanking you for the, your talk. Uh, and Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you too. Um, maybe we have one final question before we wrap up, or or should we close it here? Anybody? Okay. No problem. Well, thank you very much again, uh, Dr. Manuku Pamen. Uh, for your really, really great talk. It was great to have you um, and look forward to uh, posting your talk on our website. Uh, could you tell us again where, if we'd like to find out more about your work, where can we find you? Oh, uh, the web, web page of the, of the university. <laughs> okay, or yes, ResearchGate, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I have a ResearchGate page, yeah. Okay, Fantastic. Hopefully up to date. Yeah, okay. awesome. Well, thank you very thank you. much and uh, have a lovely afternoon and talk to you thank soon. Thank you. Thanks, you soon. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.